Hello, uh, I am Tyler Disney and this tutorial is going to be about how to clean up new Revit files for linking into your central. Uh, this is a task that during a project uh, typically happens weekly and you have to do it on a couple different models um, and so it is good to know how to do it right. Uh, Often when you get a model from the architect, structural, electrical, whoever else you're getting models from, um, they haven't cleaned them up at all, and there's a lot of extra junk in them, and so it will make your production work a lot faster if you clean them up and um, uh, just make them a lot leaner and take out a bunch of stuff that doesn't need to be in there. So this is going to be the process of doing that. So let's jump into it. Um, I've got an example project, Vernonia. Um, first things first, you have to make sure that you're not in your central file, whatever you're working in. Um, so for the sake of this video, I'm going to assume um, that your central file is a mechanical file, a mechanical central file. So we're going to link in an architectural file for Vernonia. Um, so close out of everything, don't have any other models open, and go to projects open, and you want to go to um, the project folder, um, it should be in drawings, Revit, uh, links, incoming, um, and, and so if you're not with our company, ignore this, this is just our sort of uh, folder structure, um, but for everyone at Integral Group, uh, this is what you should be doing. Um, wherever you got the model from, from the FTP site typically, um, if you're the one who downloaded it, make sure that you download it um, in this folder, this um, Revit links incoming, uh, and then make a dated folder for it and stick it in there. So I just assume that that's already happened. This is the file perfectly as is from the architect. Now don't double click it to open it. Just click it once so it's selected. And then we need to detach from central, and um, let's audit it as well. And then we're going to open it. And this is the first choice, uh, whether to detach and preserve work sets or detach and discard. Uh, detach and preserve work sets. Pause this if I can. Maybe I can't. Never mind, we'll just uh, watch Revit think. It's always fun. See, you can fast forward this part, I can't. It's rather unfair if you think about it. On the other hand, I'm drinking beer, and you probably aren't, so. Maybe I'm winning. Choice number two, uh, Revit will say that there's a lot of reference files in there that it can't find, which is normal because the saved path is somewhere on the architect's server's hard drive. So um, we want to open manage links to correct the problem, and we want to remove all the links we find. So Revit links, select them all, I'm just clicking here, holding down shift, clicking remove. 
Um, any error messages are probably fine. Just go ahead and delete things. Doing irrevocable things on computers is a very empowering feeling. Okay, so we're done. We've got all of the links cleared out. Hit OK. And now we are in the architect's model. Uh, so first things first, Revit thinks some more, and then first things first, um, we want to get rid of all extraneous views. Views take up a lot of memory um, in a file. So you can see over here in the project browser under views, um, DocJX has a lot of different views and they have a lot of different sub-disciplines of views. So you know, if I go in here, here's some views that they never categorized and here's some views in here and and there and I can't just select everything and delete it won't let me um, I have to actually delete views I have only views selected not discipline selected um, and I can delete things um, but you know it would take a really long time to go through all this so there is a faster way to delete views um, if you go up here to views uh, Bura view type and right click it then click type properties uh, pull this drop down and click all ok it reorganizes it and as far as I can tell just going to views all gives you the sort of simplest fewest number of subdisciplines so that it's a faster job of deleting stuff now you can't delete everything otherwise there wouldn't be anything left in the model uh, Revit won't let you so you need to have at least a couple of floor plans or at least one I think um, floor plans left undeleted um, so um, I'm not sure it really matters um, so I'm just going to pick all of the floor plans and I'm going to deselect Uh, I'm going to deselect this one, and that one, and those two, uh, and then I'm going to delete everything else. Um, okay, so in this project, ah, I'm glad this happened actually, in this project, um, revision clouds have been issued, which means um, uh, this warning is nice in terms of the fact that you can't delete views where you have annotated revisions because if you were able to do that then you might be able to get yourself in trouble um, but we're not the architect uh, they have their model and it's fine so we just need to go get rid of some revision clouds um, or, or some revisions what it said was that um, uh, it, it mentioned revisions had been issued and it wouldn't let us delete those so we're just going to go trick it by going into manage if I recall correctly um, additional settings sheet issues and revisions and you see here these are all of the different revisions that have been issued on this project because this project is actually um, mostly done by now it's in construction so there's been lots of ASI's and revisions and such and some have been issued so we're just going to tell Revit that none of these have been issued and again never do this to your own model only to linked models because they no longer matter they're not record models um, uh, so select all the floor plans um, deselect a couple of floor plans that seem likely I, I generally just try to go for like you know floor plan one or something like that I don't know what AAK means but we'll just do that. Delete. Uh, warning messages are fine. You're noticing a theme to this video. Watch Revit think. I mean, 
it's not a terrible computer. Not the fastest either. Okay, done with four plans. And so pretty much everything else we can delete. Now the caveat to that is that sometimes in your central model uh, you have views, sheet views, and you want to uh, reference, oh, uh, quick note, 3D views, man, delete all of those, because those take up a lot of memory, I think. Um, sh right, so um, one of the ways that you can set visibility of linked views is um, to quote-unquote by linked view. And what that means is that your central model will reference one of the views that's in this model and basically just copy its visibility graphics settings. That can be really useful, especially for roof plans where it's kind of tricky to get things looking just right the way the architect has it. So, um, you know, that might be something that if you know there are views that you want to... Um, uh, that you want to copy the visibility settings of those views you want to leave. Um, now, of course, you might be saying, well, I don't know. Um, if it's early in the project, the architect's file probably isn't very big yet, and so it's not a big deal. Oh my god, there's a lot of these. It's probably not a big deal if you um, just kind of leave extra views undeleted. Um, and then you'll kind of get a sense as you're setting it up for which views you uh, want to delete, which views you, uh, or, or which views you actually want to reference. Um, and then once you have that figured out, maybe you could note that in the splash, uh, splash view, our version of this essentially. Um, but other than that, and a couple floor plans, delete all of the views. Um, and I think I'm just going to pause this because this is boring. I'm just going to delete the rest of these. Apparently I can't. Pause. And we're back, hopefully. So I've deleted all the views. Uh, well, almost all the views. Uh, I saved these couple floor plans here. Um, and I forgot to mention, you need to save the drafting view that has the saved central view. Um, just because it's nice just to leave this. Revit won't let you delete a view you have open, and this is the view you want to have open, so don't delete it. Um, and then I saved these four plans because they seemed, uh, I don't know, cute and innocent or something, so I spared them. Anyway, so we're done with deleting views, um, and then we can go on to deleting everything else. So in the project browser, you know, it's views, legends, schedules, sheets, families, groups. We're going to delete stuff from views, legends, schedules, and sheets going to leave those alone for now. Uh, legends, delete everything. Oops. Um. Okay. Uh, schedules, delete those too. Now on to sheets. Uh, so once again, uh, everything is sort of ordered according to a special um, schema that the architect has set up. Uh, custom Bura sheet type. Bura is the architect, by the way. Um, so again, it's going to be kind of a pain in the ass to go through. So we can go in here, right click, type properties, uh, and change it to all. And then we've got all of the sheets, which you'll notice don't have any views attached to them, um, because we deleted all of them, which makes sense. So, delete all sheets. So this can seem kind of boring and tedious, but um, honestly, if you're in the right frame of mind, it can be one of the funnest things you do, is just delete the crap out of a Revit model. It's all in how you think about things, really. Am I going to have to pause you again? Uh, 
Alrighty, so the sheets finally finished deleting themselves, so we have no more sheets, scandals, or legends. Um, and we're pretty good, that's, that's going to be the bulk of the sort of fat in this model. And uh, now there's one last thing to do, well not one last thing, but one more thing to do in deleting stuff is to purge unused. So in a Revit model there's going to be a lot of stuff that is just sort of sitting there, not actually being used in the model. And since we just deleted a bunch of crap, there's going to be even more stuff that's not being used. Title blocks and detail groups and all sorts of stuff. So um, this is another part where we get to delete just a lot of stuff. and. Um, I'm probably going to have to pause a lot, but as you can see, so uh, this window comes up, purge unused, has a whole list of stuff. By default, everything that's not used in the project will be checked, so you don't have to do anything. Um, it's just sort of interesting to read this number. There's, 16, there's 1,700 unused items in this model, which is a fair amount, so we're going to hit OK to delete all of them. Now, so the thing with elements that aren't being used is that some elements that aren't being used have sort of an, an hierarchical relationship to other elements. So, so element A has two children, B and C, essentially. So Revit will think that B and C are not unused until you delete A, and then B and C will be unused. Um, that's sort of an awkward way of saying that you have to hit the purge unused button several times to actually delete everything um, that's not being used. So uh, we're going to do that and I'm going to pause it again. Okay, so it finally finished um, and we have to hit it more times so I'm going to hit it again and see how many elements are left. Fifty-eight, not too bad. Shouldn't have to pause it. In that should be able to run through that pretty quick. Any more? Nine. See, that did that pretty much right away. So yeah. that probably got everything. There are no more items that are unused, so we're good. Um, we have pretty much gotten rid of everything. Um, so now, uh, all we have left to do is the uh, famous double save operation. So when this file came to us, uh, nine times out of ten, the architect or the electrical engineer or the structural engineer or the mechanical or whoever gave it to you uh, didn't bother to detach it from central. If they did, they're very nice, but most people tend not to. Um, so we have to make it not a central anymore, otherwise it's kind of a pain. Um, but what that means is you have to save it twice. Um, I would explain why, but to be honest, I don't understand why. I just know you have to do this. So um, this is the file that we opened. And remember, we haven't saved it yet. We don't want to save over this, because this is kind of a nice record and archive of what we got from the architect. All we're interested in is um, the linked file. So our mechanical central file is looking at this file with this name in this location under links to look for the architectural linked file. And we want to save over this with our file. So bump up to this folder, select the architectural link, which um, has been renamed to um, sort of our naming convention, or at least a different one. Um, and before you hit save, go to options, and you'll notice that uh, make this a central model after save is both checked and grayed out, meaning I can't change it. 
Um, so, you know, I'm going, well, hey, I, I, I don't want it to be a central model. Um, well, uh, tough luck. You have to save it as a central model. So do that. Um, and one you better already existing. Yes, you do want to replace it. Um, um, so that's that's save number one, and there will be another one coming up where we make this no longer a central file. Almost there. Okay, so it finished saving. Um, it's thinking again. What is it thinking about now? Okay, it finished saving. Uh, save number one. Now we have to save it again. But before we have to do that, we have to make all of the work sets uneditable. Um, and they have a lot of work sets. Again, I don't understand why do we have to do this fully technically. I have no idea. But um that's that's the way it goes. We have to make all of these work sets uneditable. So shift select all of them, click not editable, hit OK, and then go back to save as. Select the link, which is what we want, go into options, and you'll notice now make this a central model after save is both unchecked and black meaning we can check it or not check it and we want to not check it but we do want to check compact file because remember this is all about making the file as small as possible so do that hit OK save it thinks more and think 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 we're done that's it close it um, now you can send an email to the rest of the people working in your mechanical file that the link has been updated and they are free to uh, uh, reload uh, the link um, and that is pretty much it uh, one last thing um, it's always sort of a game to see how much of the file you can compress so let's take a quick look at how much we actually did. So the model that we got from the architect was 157.9 megabytes. And we compressed it to ah, 87. Not bad, because I noticed the version before, the link before, was something like 130, 140. So I did a better job than whoever did it last, which in all honesty, it was probably me. Um, anyways, that's all there is to it. Uh, remember to log your scores of how many megabytes you sheared off the model file. And uh, yeah, that's it. Happy linking or something. Cheers.